before I begin my homily today, uh, because there was no opportunity to do this beforehand, I want to welcome all the guests that we have here tonight. I know many have traveled great distances to be here with our uh, soon-to-be new Catholic. And I want to thank all the rest of you for coming to help us to celebrate this great event. We come together tonight and we are concluding or bringing to an end the Tritium, the three days of the Tritium, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and now Easter. And we reflect that all day today, we reflected on Jesus in the tomb. And there are times in our own lives when you and I may feel like we are in the tomb, where we feel alone, we feel the darkness, the loneliness, the hardship. But in those times, Christ is asking us to remember, to remember that there is a light. This church was dark when we started tonight, and that single Easter candle, the light of Christ, came in and pierced the darkness. And as we came forward and we shared that light, the church was aglow with candlelight. I only wish you guys could see what we see. If we look out and see this whole church lit up, it is a reminder to us that as we come together and we bring our light together, we are able to share that burden of Christ. As I was up there today reflecting on today's reading and reflecting on Easter itself, I started to think about my favorite apostle, Peter. And I started to wonder what it must have been like for Peter to be running to the tomb with John the apostle and to be outrun by the youngster, because John the apostle got there first. I can relate to that now. <laughs> and he peered in that tomb and he saw it empty. What must have been going through his mind, the joy that must have filled his heart to know that he, who he loved more than life itself, has been risen. And yet maybe not totally understanding. It said they looked into the tomb and they saw the wrapping. And it said the wrapping around the head were folded. Not fold it like you fold the towel, but fold it as if Jesus had just passed through it and collapsed. But Jesus had transcended those wrappings. And you know, that's what the resurrection of Jesus Christ does for you and me. It helps us to transcend the problem of this world. It helps us to realize that, hey, this isn't all there is. Praise be Jesus. Okay? We know there is something better waiting for us, and we're not to let the trappings of this world 
the concern for earthly wealth, the concern for, for earthly glory or pride or popularity or whatever the case may be. A path to it. You know, the disciples, when Jesus was arrested, scattered and ran away, all but one. Peter denied even knowing Jesus three times. And they went from hiding in this upper room, afraid that someone would catch them and treat them just like they, would have, they did Jesus, to going out into the world and spreading the good news. And all but one giving his life for the gospel message. What changed then? What made the difference? St. Paul tells us it was the empty tomb. He said, for if the tomb is not empty, if Jesus had not risen, our faith is in vain. It is by the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that you and I have the courage to do what we have to do. It is by the resurrection of Jesus Christ that you and I can stand up for the faith. You and I are not afraid of our personal crucifixion which we take place each day as we mention Jesus to people. It is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that allows you and me to deal with the loss of loved ones. Knowing that in the resurrection of Jesus, we know that if we are faithful, we will be back together again. The only thing that made the death of my brother bearable at all was to know I will see him again. And I will love him even more in heaven than I did on this earth. And knowing that death is not an end. And my dear brothers and sisters, once we understand death is not an end, we have conquered our greatest fear. Once you and I know that death is not a bad thing, because heaven is a great place. You know, I, God has given me that grace lately to say, hey, you know, heaven is not a bad place. You know, if the Lord were to tap on my shoulder and say, hey, you want to come to heaven today? Do you think I'd pause a second? Let go. You know, if I were to give you a free ticket to Hawaii and say, hey, next week the whole congregation is going to fly to Hawaii, I'll bet you 90% of you would be off the plane and not being afraid at all. But we're going to a better paradise. One where the price has already been paid. Every time Jesus greeted the apostles after the resurrection, he greeted them with the same words. The same words our former Holy Father used as he introduced himself to the world after he was named John Paul II, and it was, be not afraid. What are we afraid of? 
Because God showed us Jesus conquered death. And you and I are sons and daughters of the resurrection. We live in the resurrection. We live in the hope of the resurrection. We live in the faith of the resurrection. We live in the presence of the resurrection. We are resurrection people. And once you and I come to that understanding, nothing can defeat us. Nothing can beat us down. Nothing can imprison us. The only thing that can imprison our souls is our own sin. And even our own sin, Jesus is saying, give them to me. And I will set you free. Jesus invites us all into this resurrection. It is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ when somebody we have loved turns on us and we're tempted to hate, it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that allows you and me to love again. When our hopes have been dashed and we're tempted to despair, it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that allows you and I to hope again. When we are tempted to doubt, it is his resurrection that gives us the strength to believe again. When we want to give up, and all the shattered parts of our lives on the ground, it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ that allows you and I to gather all the pieces together and start all over again. This is the night. Salvation has been shown to us. We are a joyful people because we know where we're going. We're a joyful people because we know we don't journey alone. And so maybe tonight and tomorrow as your family gather together to celebrate this great day, spend some time reflecting and asking yourself one simple question. What difference does it make to me that the tomb is empty?